Hey, how's it going? My name is Joe, if this is the first time you've ever visited my channel, and I do rifle scope reviews. Now, while this does not make me an expert in any way, what it does make me is a pretty well-versed amateur. So if you'll stick with me, I'll help your ass pick out your first scope or possibly your second or third rifle scope. Maybe somewhere along the way you bought a scope, you made a gigantic, gigantic mistake, mistake and you don't want to do it again. Believe me, I get it. Hopefully this information will help you out. Before we go any further, let's talk about the purpose of the rifle you're planning on putting the scope on. Now, if this is a scope that's gonna go from rifle to rifle, you're gonna want a pretty wide range of variable power. But if you're mainly concerned with just going out to the rifle range, you can go to something that's a higher magnification and you don't have to worry about it. If it's a scope for an AR-15 or something like that, then you'll want an LPVO, a low-powered variable optic scope. And if you're wanting to try your hand at precision shooting, then you'll want to be focused on the first focal plane precision scope. We'll get to all that in just a second. Now, the best piece of advice I could give anybody that's getting ready to buy a scope and they're kind of new to scope shopping is do not buy a digital scope. Why? You have a battery go dead, you're shit out of luck. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about a few of the numbers on the scope. We're gonna talk about a three to nine by 40, probably the most vanilla, most common scope out there. The three to nine is the magnification range. On the low end, it'll magnify up to three times. On the high end, it'll magnify nine times. The 40 is the front bell measured in millimeters. And in the measurements, you're also gonna run into tube diameter. Normally, there are three sizes. There's one each, 30 millimeter, and 34 millimeter and that will cover 99% of the scopes on the market right now. Now, outside the LPVOs, most scopes we're going to talk about here will have a bell on the front of it. It'll swell on the front end, and what that does, it gives you a larger objective size. The larger objective gives you a larger exit pupil, and the larger the exit pupil, the easier it is to get centered up in the scope so that everything's in focus. The magnification also comes into play here, so the lower the magnification, the larger the exit pupil, and the brighter the scope will be, everything else being equal. All right, now there's fixed power and variable power scopes on the market. To get a lot more versatility, you'll want a variable power, and that's the only place I would start shopping if you're looking for your first scope. All right, now you're not going to be shopping long and you're going to run into a couple of choices. It's going to be second focal plane or first focal plane. Very simply put, a second focal plane scope, the reticle remains constant regardless of the magnification. On the first focal plane, the reticle grows as the magnification grows. Why would you want something like that? Because on a first focal plane, if you're using the reference points, they'll remain constant as the magnification goes up and down. But 99% but, but of the scope shoppers out there, if you'll get a second focal plane to start out with, you'll be a lot happier. And when you go somewhere and look at them in person, which that's something else I very much recommend that you do, you'll be able to look at the reticle and know it'll stay constant like that throughout the magnification range. Now, magnification is another one that's real easy to jump out there and get too much magnification. The more you magnify the image, the more distortion you're bringing into it, and more importantly, the more narrow the field of view is down range. If you're magnifying something three, three times, times, you're going to have a huge field of view. You magnify that exact same image at 25 times, you have a very, very small field of view. For new scope buyers, I would not buy anything that goes above 20 power. Look at something like a 3 to 9, 3 to 12, 4 to 16. There's a reason those magnifications are so incredible incredibly popular because they're so versatile and you don't run into the headaches that you do with the higher magnification scopes. And don't get sucked into all the hype about larger tube diameter scopes. Light passes through things. It doesn't flow like water does. A larger tube only does one thing. It allows you more adjustment range vertically and a lot of times horizontally. That's it. That's the only thing that it does. The trade-off is a lot of extra weight, a lot of extra cost, and the entry-level 34 millimeter tubes start at about $400 and they go way up from there. The objective of the scope is another thing a lot of guys get really hung up on. They want a 56 millimeter objective instead of something like a 40 or a 44. Because of the larger objective, you're going to not only need higher range, but it's going to be a hell of a lot heavier. Okay, when you start looking at scopes, you're going to basically see two types of reticles. There's the traditional hunting type reticle that's either just a cross 
or it has a duplex, and it may have some additional reference points for holdover for if you're shooting further than your zeroed rifle, you have some kind of reference point to allow for the wind or for the elevation. The other type are the precision type reticles. These are the Christmas trees and that kind of thing. Normally there's a lot of numbers, there's a lot of hash marks, and it can be very, very confusing for guys when they're buying their very first scopes. A duplex with a lighted dot in the center is almost unbeatable for a first scope. You've got illumination if it's a little bit dark to help you pick up the target. You've got a crosshair that'll bring your eye right to the center without any hassle, and you don't have all the visual clutter that the first focal plane precision reticles have. Now, when it comes to turret, there's two types. There's the covered turrets and the exposed turrets. The covered turrets are hunting based, that way you don't have to worry about bumping them. And then there's the exposed turrets that are made for precision shooting. They're a little more tactile, a lot taller, and they're not as weatherproof as a hunting turret is. And on those precision turrets, a lot of times there will be a zero stop, which basically lets you run the elevation up. And when you bring it back down to your minimum zero, it'll stop right there. It'll only let you go to higher elevations. There's no need shooting 50 yards if everything's going to be 100 and out. And there's also locking turrets. These are the type of turrets that pull up and push down. And when you move them and adjust them and push down, they'll lock in place. My recommendation would be go to a gun shop. They'll have a ton of rings there. You can pick something that'll fit your rifle exactly. Because if you mail order them and you get the wrong ones, guess what? You're stuck with them. Do your research. You're already on YouTube. If you've got it narrowed down to a couple of different scopes, try to watch videos about those two type of scopes back to back. And a lot of times, if they're very similar scopes, you'll find videos that guys have already made that are comparing those two exact scopes head to head. That can help a bunch. The next thing is price. You know your budget. Nobody else does. You know what you're comfortable paying. But I will say this, money spent on a rifle scope for $100 to $1,800, every $100, it definitely is better. Now at around $1,700 or $1,800 to $2,800, you start reaching the diminishing returns. They are better, but they're slightly better. But every $100 that you spend, you're getting a better scope. You get what you pay for it in optics. Now there are some really good buys out there, but there's also a shitload of landmines and a hell of a lot of places to piss off your money. Amazon, eBay, and gun shows are the worst. You'll go in there and see something that's like, oh my God, look at this huge, beautiful scope. It's such a bargain. It comes with laser pointers. It comes with rings. It comes with sunshades, pocket knives, a 12-pack of condoms, shoe inserts, a brand new belt. The more shit that comes on that is stuff you're actually paying for and your money's not going on the scope. The best optics on the planet have one thing in common. You open the box, there's a scope. Some may or may not come with rings and some may or may not come with a sunshade, but that's all that's in the box. You're paying for the steak, not the sizzle. Don't get sucked in to buying a scope that has all kinds of goodies but the scope itself is a piece of shit. I've had a lot of guys ask me to make this video. That's the reason I'm doing this right now. And I'm not gonna do the typical YouTube shit talking about subscribe, like, all that crap. That bugs the living shit out of me. I made this video to try to help you pick out a good scope, and I really, really hope it did. Thanks for watching.